assuming that it's yeah. gendered. Yeah. It's so wrong. Because yeah. you can have a mom who is struggling to take her kids to the doctor, who's not going to be remembering all the medicine that, that she's talking about myself. You know, <laughs> am I then a bad mom? You know? Everybody has, like, this is the thing. She, like, when you're assigning things to a gender, like, you're ignoring the individual strengths and weaknesses that people have. Right. Hi and welcome to uh, The Feminist Family. The Feminist Family. I'm Corey. I'm Pamela. <laughs> and you're very happy to be here again. And uh, thank you for the 105 um, subscribers. Oh, yeah. We're okay. growing. Our family is growing. And um, it's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, where do we want to start? Where do we want to start? How are you doing today? <laughs> doing well. <laughs> I am as well. Okay. Good. Good. And... Um, I guess we were talking about um, uh, roles in family and um, uh, how men, I believe, that um, the society uh, teach men that there are a lot of things that they cannot do um, at home, Mm -hmm. and especially when it's about um, the kids' education. Right. And... On my social media, I asked, um, on my Instagram, I asked this week, um, apart giving birth and breastfeeding, what other things that men cannot do once the baby is there, once the kid is there? And it's kind of like um, the first responses that, that, that were coming, like uh, it was like, Obvious. I, I got like a mom that were shocked about that question because they felt like a, this is how I interpreted it. It's, they felt like a, um, we are questioning, like, why do we need to compare men and women when okay. it's about kids? Because the mom is the one that is absolutely needed, which shocked me because I believe that men can do Everything once the baby is there yep. and um, except breastfeeding. Yep. So and many women can't breastfeed. Yes, breastfeeding is not like like they say fed is best. Like mm-hmm. formula works. Like I know I know there's a lot of taboo because it's not natural breast milk or whatever, but it's formula works. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna first ask you because um, I know that uh, you had me um, with. Uh, my kids like mm-hmm. i saw you doing on everything right and you were able to change the kids you were able to make them sleep you were able to wake up in the middle of the night to go see them like you um you were doing everything uh, were you doing that for your kids as well yeah uh, okay. even even as when i was a conservative man i was still doing those things when my kids were babies and, and little so what do you think about that? What, uh, when the women think that, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a role that, um, okay, I'm not saying that mom can be replaced, right? Well, but I'm saying not, that yeah. um, men can do absolutely everything. That's the I statement, think, right? <laughs> I, think that, I think that men, if they have any kind of semblance of, like, integrity – should be insulted by the idea that they can't do all the jobs that are necessary to keep their children alive. <laughs> but why? Why is it uh, that um, until now in 2024, um, some like people still believe that um, there are like uh, roles that are gendered that um, wow. you you should not expect. Men are congratulated if they are taking care of the kids, right? Um, if they are staying home uh, with the kids for one day while uh, the mom is, you know, going out, even having fun, right? They're like, oh, okay, they are congratulated. Like, this is a good man. He can stay home and take care of the kids. What's your thought on, on that? Which part? <laughs> Why do we congratulate or uh, compliment men who are taking care of 
uh, kids because, things that is yeah. not recognized on uh, women. Like, uh, well, it's just it's just because uh, patriarchal traditional gender roles have been enforced for so long that people truly believe them, despite their clear, uh, I don't know, abstractness, arbitrariness. Uh, like they're just they're not they're not true statements of both the universe or the world or people, but people believe they are because that's how they've been indoctrinated for their entire lives. And that's been continued ever since, well, essentially the dawn of agriculture. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, but, um, but is it a compliment to a man to say, um, is a man who take care of his kid a good man? Well, not inherently. I mean, uh, it should be, the, that's the minimum, right? Right. Like, do you, it's like calling, like when you're, when you, the man stays home with kids, do you call it babysitting? Some no. say that. Some do say that, but that's obviously wrong, right? Like, mm-hmm. they're your kids. It's not babysitting. You're parenting. Take care of your kids. That's the bare minimum. <laughs> that's the bare minimum. <laughs> Take like, care of your t- kids. Like, that's. Because I, I always say, like, uh, even women are not, and I don't feel like uh, I was born a mom, right? Uh, well, when, you weren't, uh, right? No. You were born a girl. Like, that doesn't make you a mom. And when I got a baby, uh, I'm not going to pretend that I knew everything, right? Right. Like, magically, um, it was all just in your head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That I had that in the in the blood and it would be automatic. I would I would get pretty easily the fact, you know, how to change um the diaper. Uh, that is something that would come. Yeah. Just because I'm a girl. No. I everybody has to learn how to do that. The thing is that often like mothers teach their daughters how to do that as they, you know, time goes on. They like do? They'll do it on babies or they'll do it on or dolls or what have you. They'll they'll take care of the neighbor kids. Like cause girls often get assigned babysitting jobs, at least in North America and Canada. Uh girls get assigned babysitting jobs where boys won't. Mm-hmm. So then the girl learns those things and the boy doesn't. Because that's how we're socializing them. That's how we're teaching them. And then when they become adults, so sure, they learn that stuff. They know it, but it's not inherent to being a girl. It's because we taught them that as they were growing. And not all girls going to do that, right? They nope. Not all girls are nope. going to be babysitting. or uh, mm. And and also, um, I think that we live in a world that is um, evolving, right? Um, the way uh, I grow up seeing like kids taken care of, is not the same now, right? right. Yeah. Um, there are always new things. Um, I think that, you know, I cannot just relay on what I was taught when I was a kid because no. some of them have been debunked. You know, <laughs> I have oh, to be yeah. updated. That's like, right. a, Think about how your parents raised you. Like, they didn't know as much about human development as we do now, as, you know, how education works and how... Uh, trauma works or like how any of it works like they were they were going along with kind of what they knew but they didn't study it they didn't like it was just information that they got from their parents or their caretakers from another place Mm -hmm. so i don't know it seems like yeah nobody has that inherent knowledge like it's not i don't know it's not genetic i guess it's not genetic (laughs) and uh i don't like it when um People believe that um, mom, they know absolutely because I feel like it's something that's going to then make it hard when um, the mom is um, struggling, right? Uh, Because uh, she needs to hide because she's supposed to get it. She's supposed to know how to, but... um, we are in 2024, right? We know about uh, d- um, postpartum depression. Yep. We know about how um, being a parent is something that pushes you to be like a... It's, you don't get it all, all the time, right? right. You, you have that anxiety as a parent. You are, you are not all the time like, that confident. Even as an experienced parent, 
I still had like various anxieties when Ray, you know, dealing with uh, our kids, your girls, mm-hmm. when, because you're going to screw up no matter how good you are at this. Yeah, you, we're doing our best, right? We are doing our best, but it, it can be like a, a challenge. It's, it's a challenging It is, uh, it is. And every kid is different. Task, and every kid is, is different. So I find it like a, that we need to, um, you know, to uh, diminish the pressure on moms, right? Yeah, sure. And, um, sure. and that needs to step, should, you know, step up. Yep, and, I agree. Um, if you are able to, uh, as a man, to go and use the washroom and do your things, right? Um, it's the same. As a baby, <laughs> the goal is to get them clean, yeah, right? That's right. <laughs> so, what would be difficult? Like, uh, to if you are able to feel that you're hungry and to go and feed yourself, and you are not gonna be feeding yourself like a uh, whatever, right? Yeah. You want to be eating on a clean plate. You want to be eating like it's the same yep, for a baby, that's right. and I. I don't understand that thing. And also, we're living in a, in a moment where, um, we've got enough proof that even, uh, homosexual, um, couples, yeah. they can, um, same sex couples can have any number of children. Yes, they can have kids. Men, you know, yep. um, yep. they can have kids and take care of them. It's not about something that is gendered. No. And, um, on another discussion, I got, we got the chance this week to, uh, to, I, I got the chance to measure how, um, mom live with, um, uh, that pressure that everything is on them. Yeah. And that men can't do, uh, can't, cannot parent because they are men, right? We assume that because they are men, there are things that they're gonna be missing, but, Again, I feel like it's parenting is not something that you're just doing alone, right? Well, it's not supposed to be. It's you. There is the society that's this, there. You know, your kid's gonna go to school yeah. or the, to the daycare. You have uh, yeah. sometimes family. You have yeah. like as a, as a woman, I don't. And I I say that because I grew up without my mom, right? right. And it's something that I'm like. No, my dad needs to take that credit, right? Okay, he was help, like right, but you know, but he had to do the job, right? Yes, and that's like you say, that's him and a generation before us. Yes, and men have been doing it. Like that's the thing. Like women have died in childbirth, many like for many many generations. Mm-hmm. We didn't have the medical knowledge we have now. So, like, what did men do when the their wife ch- died in childbirth, and then so then they've got a, a child. They have to take care of it. They have to marry someone else instantly, Absolutely. like instantly. before the end of the day. Sometimes <laughs> that's how it was. Uh, that's how it was done. Like in the past, I have so many examples where uh, in the past they would take that kid and take take uh, it to a take relative, it to a relative, you know, yeah. uh, to a mom. But I think that mentality needs to change also. You know, well, the, the words, the way the, the way it was, okay, I'm talking, uh, you know, for us um, mm. here in Canada or for where I come from, um, we doing something else as jobs, you know. It's not like a absolutely... Oh, yeah, that's um, right. You, you cannot know. have a single income house yeah. in Canada. Yes. So... What are you supposed to do? You have to team up on everything mm-hmm. because we both have to work to survive. So we both have to work on the take care of the children mm-hmm. uh, to sur- to keep them alive and healthy and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Alive mainly. <laughs> but why is it that? Because uh, for me, it's something that is really obvious, right? Yeah. Why is it that it's still something that is hard? Because I know that the question uh, uh, I was asked, man, I'm, I'm still asked like uh, that question all the time. Like, um, okay, you're sending your kids to um, their dad mm-hmm. and he's alone. Are you sure he's going to be able to do that? Like, it's. He's a grown man. Grown men are 
should be able to take care of children. I'm not saying that everybody, like all men, are going to be uh, able to do it like uh, perfectly. But perfection is not in this world, right? No, that's right. But I'm not on also going to assume that why people think that I care better about the kids than him. Why is it like a? a, a like, is he? Were you questioned? Uh, because you you you. You also were in a shared custody, right? With yeah, kids. Uh, no. Were you questioned, like, to the fact that uh, are men questioned as well? Like, uh, I don't know if he meets people who ask him, like, uh, oh, the kids are at Pam. Are oh. they going to be okay? Yeah, are they okay? <laughs> Can she take care of them? Like, yeah. I'm like, no, hmm. uh, nobody ever asked me that. Although, I, I remember one time taking the kids, like, uh, I think it was Sirik and Sela both needed to go to the doctor. And I, so I took them and there was an, I don't know, a slightly older couple uh, sitting at the doctor's office mm-hmm. and they were like, oh, it's so interesting to see that you're taking your kids to the doctor. Congratulations. <laughs> you're a good dad. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And they're like, it, back in our day, that would have never been the way you did. It. Oh, well, you know, times are changing. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming that it's yeah. gendered. Yeah. It's so wrong because yeah. you can have um, a mom who is struggling to take her kids to the doctor who's not going to be remembering all the medicine that, that she's talking about myself. You know, <laughs> am I then a bad mom? You know, everybody has like this is the thing, she, like when you're assigning things to a gender, like you're ignoring the individual strengths and weaknesses that people have. Right. So, like, if you're not good at remembering medicines, and I am, well, then we can complement each other. Right? <laughs> it's not something that is, why should that be gendered? Like, yeah, it doesn't. Why, um, why people, or why the society was, uh, would assume that I'm going to be good at yeah. that, you know? I'm going to be good at taking care of the kids, like... Why would they question that the kids are at my house or at his house just based on the fact that he's a man, I'm a woman? Yeah. I found that I never, like each time I never know what to respond to that because I feel like uh, there is too much assumption. I'm not saying that he's perfect. I'm not perfect. Right. Right. Yeah. But. But he should be able to take care of them without concern. Right. <laughs> like that's how it works. Right. I don't know. Okay, if people who are listening to us, they can tell us what they think, like, uh, if they see it, like, um, you know, uh, if they hear that, like, uh, do you hear, like, uh, people questioning, like, um, the well-being of kids if they are with a man, with, a, with their dad, simply because he's a dad? Yeah, I don't know. It seems It seems foolish to me to think that way. It's very... It's very 19th century and, <laughs> you know, let's go in 2024. Like, uh, let's, yeah. let's empower people. Let's not assume, right? Yeah. Because... Yeah, like, so, I mean, we were kind of talking about why this happens, right? Mm-hmm. And like, so there's like, uh, I mean, that's part of the patriarchy, right? Mm-hmm. Because women have often not been... Uh, considered able to work Mm -hmm. but they are all they do still have to participate in the capitalist economy and they they would often do that in the home by supporting with support roles Mm -hmm. and so like some of this patriarchal stuff some of these gender roles is also tied into economics and and capitalism and Mm -hmm. the way that that so uh like women were and it's carried over even though women have to work outside of the home now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So these roles that were in initially part of the exploitation of the working class, mm-hmm. they rolled into like a different, more large, like a more oppressive to women type mm-hmm. of uh, situation, mm-hmm. which depending on the feminists you read, uh, like can be bad or can be good. Like, uh, some people are really pro working in the system that we're in mm-hmm. and some people are really more pro traditional family roles mm-hmm. and where women wouldn't have to work where mm-hmm. like 
it's a family choice. I, I think that it's it's pretty good that we live in a era where um, family, you know, um, you are authorized to be different. You know, some families are gonna choose that one parent stay at home if they can afford it, and um, some other cho- are going to choose that they are all working, even though they can survive with just one income, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, because, that's true. Because yeah. some people have, like, if they have an education and they are following a career path, mm-hmm. then they may not want to give that up just mm-hmm. because they have a child. But they may they may still want to have a child, but they don't want to give up that career path that they've worked very hard on. Yeah, some moms don't, you know, I mean, don't don't want to also stay home, right? And yeah. uh, and it's okay, you know. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Some are like. Yeah, you need a break <laughs> for sure. Like you need to get out of that. Like, mm-hmm. And again, this is part of like I think the partnership stuff that we've kind of talked about in all the previous episodes mm-hmm. is that like. We're on the same team. We are, that means we share responsibilities and we share, like we work. My strengths can help your weaknesses, and your mm-hmm. strengths can help my weaknesses. And like, so yeah, you want to get out of the house? Have at her, right? Like, <laughs> like if if I was earning um like enough money so that we can, we could survive with just my income, would you be um stay at home, Dad? You know it. In a heartbeat. I have so many hobbies to do. I uh, I could take care of the it, kids just fine and then <laughs> clean the house and take care of everything and then work on my fun stuff. It's staying at home. <laughs> it's being a stay at home parent doesn't mean that you have, you get that much time for hobbies either. Oh, sometimes. Right. It, it, it doesn't mean that you are not doing anything. Like no, I consider that, you know, it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's a full time job. Of course. Like a, Especially if the children are at home. Mm-hmm. Like if they're not in school yet, that's a, that's a big thing. You got to take care of them all day. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, there's lots to do. Okay, we are not going there because you know my income. <laughs> <laughs> you need to walk. You're not going to sugar mama. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully, I I don't see myself like a. I tried it. I did it. I was forced to. It, right? right, being um, a stay-at-home mom at a certain moment sort of, as yeah. I could not walk. Yeah. And then there were the pandemic and then there were like a, a lot of things happening and I was staying home. It's not something for me, honestly. Yeah. It's, no, no. Well, and we struggled financially. I'm the proof that it's not something that, you know, no that comes like as a, as a, you know, integrated. Like a, I'm not the kind of mom who's, uh, you know, having fun in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> having fun like doing the chores and yeah. uh no um i gotta be in the right mood but sometimes i can have fun in the kitchen cooking like I, it was fun to do yeah certain, it's fun to do certain things when it's something that you do just once in a while because you just decided <laughs> that you are going to do that for the pleasure yeah but um, as, a, as part of your responsibilities, as part of my responsibility, <laughs> no, I, I would love to have someone who, who is doing that, all yeah. of that for me, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that the best thing is, you know, um, to know that there are choices and to have partners who understand, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's that's the key, right, is that. Every family is going to have its own dynamic. Mm-hmm. But I do still think that there's like uh, like men have to be willing to take responsibility for certain things, right? That they kind of get a pass on because of certain s- traditional gender roles that society still perpetuates. Mm-hmm. But is there any interest for a, a man to take care of his kids? Um, I'm going to give you an example. Like, okay. um uh, it's a man who um, loves his wife and his kids. They have uh, three, four kids, okay. and he's working a lot, okay. and he's earning a lot of money. Sure. And um, the wife is staying home and um, taking care of the kids. Mm-hmm. And when the husband comes from work, he's pretty tired. He's been dealing with a lot of things. At okay. work, so he just wants to relax. Okay. And um, he's like, no, I'm the one 
going out and working and bringing a lot of money. So when I get home, um, you, I, you know, take care of me. Take care of me and, you know, don't involve me in the... Uh, I, don't, I don't like that. Like, Why? Yeah. I, I mean, I was a single parent for three years when my kids were pretty young. Mm-hmm. I had them for a week and then I, they would go back to their mothers for a week. And I worked and I was tired. You still got to do the dishes. You still got to do the laundry. Like, you don't get off, you don't get off the hook because you work outside yes. of the home, right? Like, but outside of the chores, like when it's about taking care of the kids, is it? I think that there is something that you learn when you are about the kids. There is a relationship that you are oh, for building sure. when yeah, you are taking sure. care of your kids. That that's pretty important as well, right? Yeah, for sure. Oh, I, I think people really underestimate that actually. Like the time, because mm-hmm. you're outside of the house, so you don't build the relationship the same way. Like uh, you can if you're if you're invested. And you specifically spend time with them and, and you care about how they're, they're feeling and you do what, you know, do the work mm-hmm. to have that emotional connection. But I, uh, yeah, I think people really underestimate it. How, how str- like how good that bond can be if you have the time and can, or, or if, even if you, when you're not, when you're, like you say, you're tired from home from work, but you still go and tuck the kids in bed and sing them a song. Mm-hmm. Like, I think people really underestimate that. It's pretty uh, important, I think, that uh, you are getting a relation, you know, with your kids. That's, that's special moments. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, know. we got some uh, interesting comments. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you for commenting. Thank you for interacting with our content and thank you for sharing. Um, it's no. not like we know everything, right? This is the feminist family. And, okay, I would love that people come and become like our family, members sure. of yeah. our big family, of the feminist family, you know. And um, feel free to say what you think about, um, you know, to sure to add something. or but, um, come on. Some people are just insulting and some people are rather silly yeah no need for that <laughs> like, honestly like um i mean do what you do you but we're not going to acknowledge you if you're a jerk <laughs> yeah yeah we we're gonna ignore that but we we have um it's good when you you have people like a, it, it's good to to joke but if you think that it's gonna make us laugh right, <laughs> yeah, right. if you are joking just by um for yourself and, uh, you know, and you are being mean, actually, it doesn't work. And, um, no, that's right. Yeah. But thousands, million, millions of channels, like, um, yeah, that's you know. right. Um, but there were some, some comments that may, that deserve, like, some clarification, perhaps, mm-hmm. or some, mm-hmm. some thoughtful, uh, response. On one of our shorts, uh, it's about, uh, it was about talking about, me, I was talking about my past, uh, my separation from my first wife and how I believed in some toxic roles mm-hmm. and whatnot. And somebody said, like, that that's not toxic. You were gaslit into belie- behaving like men, not behaving like men should. Mm. And first of all, I want to clarify, that's not what gaslighting is. Mm. Gaslighting is when somebody lies to you and tries to manipulate you through emotional and mental abuse to not believe that they're being abused. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, so are you abused? I am not. I'm not abusing you. In fact, it, I was never gaslit into believing that I was bad. In fact, most of society told me that I was correct. Mm-hmm. My ex-wife separated from me because, and, and because of some of the disputes we had, right? Mm-hmm. We separated and I examined my behavior. Nobody gaslit me. Nobody made me feel bad. Mm -hmm. I examined my behavior and realized that it was not good and needed to be changed. Mm -hmm. And that led me to understanding that the way that men are supposed to behave is nonsense. (laughs) It's absolute nonsense. There is no way that men are supposed to behave. Men behave individually the way that they behave and that's okay. No matter what, as long as they're not hurting somebody. <laughs> exactly. And, that's the key word. And that's where toxicity 
is is what we're talking about when we talk about toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when you're hurting people or you're oppressing people or you're using gender roles to say you are under my control, you're under my thumb, and that's that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that's toxic. And <laughs> yeah, no, that's not ga- that's not what gaslighting is. And toxic masculinity is real. And the things I discussed in that video were oppressive. <laughs> so I, I, I thought that I, deserved I, mention. I have, um, there are some critics uh, about toxic masculinity. People say that men are not anymore um, men, menish. That's. What is that? Um, what? Okay. So, first of all, what does it mean to be a man? Exactly. How do you define it? Like, where, where, are, and where is that coming from? Okay, a man is, um, for what I hear, is um, he's the one uh, in charge, wow. uh, planning, providing. What if, it's a, what if he's an idiot? There's lots of idiots. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, like, what if he's an idiot? He doesn't. He's a provider. What if he's lazy? What if he doesn't feel like working? What if he doesn't, you know, what if... He's uh, the defender? Well, and even even on, not on a, like, insulting level, what if... what is a disabled man who is unable to work less of a man? No. No. Ex- the answer is obviously no. Because your manhood is not tied to providing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it isn't tied to, like, it just makes no, no sense. Like, it's just arbitrary nonsense piled on top of arbitrary nonsense. Is the provider man like a capitalistic thing? Like a well, I mean, in modern age, obviously everything is tied to capitalism, right? But, yeah. But uh, I mean, the whole men being in charge of the family and the, the oppression of women—it sort of stems out of the desire for owning property, which came about during the agriculture, the dawn of agriculture, mm-hmm. like. I have a friend who studies prehistory. I do a show with him every two weeks. Mm-hmm. And that's what what we've talked about multiple times is how, like, the dawn of agriculture is where you get a lot of conflict and men dominating women and wars between people because everybody wants to own property. And the only way to ensure that you could control, who, that your lineage mm-hmm. continued to own your property was through the controlling of women. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, it it goes back pretty far, but it's still nonsense. It's still arbitrary. It's, it's the idea of owning. I don't like when a man owns a wife. Like, no. the idea that, you know... You don't get to own I, people. You don't get to own people. Like, <laughs> even that. your kids, you don't own them. Like, you don't own them. You know, um... No, I... I, I really, I really have a lot of... Tr- Do you own me? Like, uh... No. Okay. Let's say that there is something that I want to do just for me. Okay. I really want to do it. Okay. Would you say that as your partner, like you're like, no, you can't do it because. If you have the means to do it yourself, if you, you know, I mean, obviously, if you ask me for help and you, yeah. I can help you, then I'll do that because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. But like, if you have the means to do it yourself, and if it doesn't undermine your relationship, then nobody should be able to tell you anything about what you're doing. Give me an order. <laughs> <laughs> it's about, it's, I, I think that it's about, um, it should not even be considered as gendered. Like, it's not about a man. Same thing both It's ways. boundaries, right? Yeah, that's right. I think that um, everyone is entitled to, 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 to set up boundaries, right? That's right. And it's not something that... You know, everyone can say, okay, this is where I cross the line, right? Yeah. Um, in our relationship. Yeah. And uh, this is what I can ac- accept. And, you know, I cannot right. accept anything that's not that. Yeah. You know, that's just boundaries. It's not something that is gendered. Yeah. And it should not be gendered. You should not be setting ba- uh, your boundaries because... Because I'm a man and you're a woman and these are the boundaries because of those roles. Yeah. Nah, no, it doesn't because make any sense. When you see, like, um, like it's simply not logical. Like yes, it doesn't, you can't draw these things out from the previous evidence of how things work. I was, uh, I, I, and again, you're gonna see, um, 
you know, the reaction of uh, people um, regarding couples, like, uh, for example, if a man cheat you okay. know, on his okay. wife, like society tend to, to, to understand, you know, because he's a man. If the woman does it, then it's the, you know, the end. Should like a cheating be gendered? Like, is it about like who is cheating? Like, um, I mean, I think that is something that is again yeah. a sort of boundary. Yeah, right? it's a boundary. Exactly. I like depending on your relationship dynamic. Some people don't even have cheating as part of their relationships. Mm -hmm. Like they believe in like open relationships or what have you, and that's whatever they do. Mm -hmm. So. So then in our relationship, we don't believe in cheating. Mm -hmm. We don't believe in sleeping with other people. Mm -hmm. So which, was it, is it worse if I do it or worse if you do it? Society would say that it's okay if you, you do it. It's not okay. I should excuse <laughs> you. You know, why I did, should. Like, why would it be okay if I do it? That doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Like, it's still like you trust me and I trust you to stay within the agreed upon bounds of our relationship. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's not about like a, it's not something that should be gendered again, right? right? Cheating is not, you don't need to to excuse it or to condemn it based on the gender of no. the person who cheated. No. Right? It's, it's, and maybe it's not even our place. If we don't know the specific bounds of somebody else's relationship, maybe it's not even our place to excuse or condemn people for doing things within that we don't know what they do in their relationship i mean uh the, mm. the, there is this uh social media era of bullying right oh, yeah. yeah um i'm thinking about that because um i, I saw a post today and um it was a a, a guy uh, his wife uh cheated on him like the first year they were together okay he excused her and okay. she cheated again okay and he sent her to her parents, and her parents came and um, apologized for her, blah, blah, blah. And uh, they were together, and now she cheated again. Okay. And all the comments were like, uh, you're not a real man, because the first time she cheated on you, uh, you should have like a... That's se go separate. But I'm not seeing the same thing when it's about... Uh, I'm not seeing that same bullying well, uh, I mean, when it's about a man who cheated that's because on his wife. it's like it's like the society excuse yeah men because men are men well boys will always be that's, boys that's that's that ownership thing coming back right because he is viewed as owning her yes and so she he she can own something obey, else she right? has to obey him yeah and she didn't obey him so now yeah. He didn't enforce that, so now he's not a real man. It's one hundred percent bullshit. It's yeah, it's it's that thing. If if he can own his wife and his kids, then you know you can own a car and own another car. If we go back <laughs> to cars, right? Right. It's like he's excused because as long as he's still uh, you know um, doing his other duties and uh, you know providing for this family, it's like society is like it's okay. You can own this family and you can own it. I don't buy into that. Like, um, I don't like this it is, when, when I see this kind yeah. of bully. Um, I think cheating is not gendered. No, I think, I think that this is where a lot of people could benefit, like with understanding and communicating, like mm -hmm. on an equitable, equal level with their partner. Mm -hmm. Because like, okay, so we've agreed we're not going to sleep with other people, right? And through our relationship and through our trust, we're not violating those boundaries because we know that it would emotionally impact the other person. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so it's not about ownership one way or the other, right, for us. But in – so then that guy, like what – like he gave – he sent his wife back to her parents because they own her? Because she's defective. Right. Except – he sent her to the garage to go repair. How many, how many other things? Like, there's so much context missing, too. Like, I don't know anything about these people. I don't know why she cheated. I didn't, I didn't get to have a conversation with her to see what her reasoning was, see what happened. Yeah, it's, uh, that's something that we, well, we, we cannot judge, right, uh, <laughs> like, about that. I think that's the main 
key is that we are not judging and but and if we and if we are judging then we can judge the the, the cheating without gendering it right we sure, can say sure. i'm vexed you know i'm you know uh it's not i'm not it, even terribly can, convinced that we should be judging somebody like s- judging the cheating one way or the other without any context even if there is a context right if my brother is cheating or if my sister is cheating right I would like to consider the cheating, like the the idea, like because yeah, the, the person is yeah. breaking a, a promise, you know. But you know, if I yeah. have to say something, right? Yeah. But it's not something that I will be gendering, yeah. right? Excuses because excusing one because you know, um, because they're that, that's yeah, yeah, that's how it is, <clears throat> and being shocked because it's a it's a woman who who did that. Um, yeah. I think it's something that I would like, you know, people to tell us what they think about it. What do you think? Uh, because as for me, like, uh, we need to, di- to make the difference between, um, like the gender and the people who are doing that and the action. And we are not going to excuse based on. Yeah. I'm just not a, I'm just not a big fan of condemning people without, you know, knowing everything that went on. You what know, do you mean? So, like, even, like, sh- she cheated, okay? Mm-hmm. She cheated mm-hmm. three times. But there's yeah. got to be something else going on there. Like, people don't do shit for no reason. Like, yeah. there's got to be a reason that she did that. She's looking for something. There's something missing. Or or maybe maybe there's not. Maybe there's some, Maybe there is something that she has going on in her, you know, brain that's making her feel that way. But is there a reason to cheat, you think? Like, would you have reason to cheat on me? No, I would never have. But, but there's. Yeah, that's what you're saying. No, like, there I'm, is a, no, there would be need to I'm be a saying, context, right? Yeah, well, but for us, like, I, this is what I mean. Like, their relationship, I don't know their dynamic. I don't know mm. their agreements. I don't know what they've concluded. Uh, I don't know if he's actually acting like he owns her. I don't know if she's okay with that. Mm-hmm. But our our relationship is more based on like equal partners who agreed that we're not going to sleep with other people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's it. Like we don't have to cheat because that's the agreement. If the agreement changes, then one per like if I violate the agreement, then that's a violation of our agreement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It will be analyzed seriously. (laughs) (laughs) Like, Like it would. Yeah. Like it's just not the same thing. Right. Mm hmm. I'm not, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like most people deserve grace and, and consideration about the reasons they do things. What are you saying? Are, are you planning to cheat on me? No, not me. You're kind of excusing it a lot. <laughs> I don't think so. I just, kind of. I'm just, You're talking about grace. Yeah, not yeah. for me, but for other okay. people. For you too. Why for other people and not for you? Because I'm in an equal partnership where we've agreed that these, that's are, the a boundary. Di- these are the boundaries. That's a, that's a boundary. That's an agreement. And that's... That's right. Yeah. No, there is no grace. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is no grace. No, I mean, um, no, there is no grace. Right. I don't I'm just know. not a fan of condemning people that I don't know anything about. I think that the moment is, for me, the moment... Uh, it will be to the point that you want to cheat. I would prefer that we talk about it, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I think that's... um, If you can't maintain... Like, that's the thing. Like, if you're an honest person who has an agreement, like a a boundary in your relationship, Mm -hmm. then you (laughs) you don't break the boundary. You, If you start to feel differently... Then you talk about your feelings. You, yeah, we, you open we, up and you be honest about the way things are going. Exactly. <laughs> and we consider that the agreement can change. You know, the agreement can evolve. Yeah. Right? That's right. But um, for me, as long as there is that agreement that's there. Well, then it's a violation. It's right? a violation, yeah. right? And right. Um, and then there are consequences. But we don't. But. That's what I'm saying about this girl, mm-hmm. this woman mm-hmm. who cheated on her husband. Mm-hmm. Like. Oh, maybe she did violate their agreement. I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. But maybe she didn't enter into this voluntarily. Maybe there's something going on there that we don't understand. Yeah. Maybe he cheated 
and there, she's retaliating, and she's the one getting condemned. Like we there, are know many what's going on. Yeah, there, there are many reasons. Yeah, there are many reasons. There are many things to say. All I hear is say. that somebody's being bullied online, and and you go, ah, what am I? How can I have a judgment here? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, I think that's yeah. Um, there are so many reasons. It's it's really hard to know what's happening just in one post. But yeah. Main key, I would say that you know, it's not about saying that that man doesn't. You know, um, maybe he's a good guy. Maybe he's just, you know, uh, maybe he's she. Maybe she is a person who just cheats and mm-hmm. that's and violates agreements and relationships, and that's that's something that he needs to deal with. Mm-hmm. But also, that doesn't change whether or not he's a man. Or maybe it's a society that uh, doesn't condemn him cheating as well. Yeah, and just because she cheated then, then they, it becomes a post it become a big thing because it <laughs> that's how society is if yeah. it's the woman doing it then it's okay that there are consequences if it's a man she needs to forgive like you talk about like i don't know how we i guess we got on the subject of cheating but there was like a whole website at one point right like that, mm. i can't even remember what it was called but it got hacked and the lists of everybody who was on it uh, all their email addresses got publicized. Oh, no. So, like, it was a cheating website, and all the emails and names got it publicized. Oh, no. This was back in, like, 2009. I cannot even believe what happened. Well, I don't know. I read something that you that's going to make you laugh <laughs> about okay. that, because okay. I don't know if it's true. I haven't verified it, so I need to, you know. <laughs> like, Caveat. But yes, 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 yes. So a um, few times ago, uh, they were able to do the DNA test okay. in Burundi. Okay. Right? Which is pretty new, right? Right. I come from Burundi, for those who don't know. And um, so one hospital was doing, the, in the whole country, it was just one hospital that was uh, doing that test, the DNA. So now... the Apparently, they stopped it because it was just creating so many issues. <laughs> of, you know, <laughs> but it was it, it was it was so funny. The East, <laughs> when I was like, I don't know how real it was either. But when when uh, my partner, my ex wife, was uh, pregnant with our with my son, um, I had a friend who considered himself an expert in these things. And he told me that, like, one in five children is born to a man, like, like, isn't the, their, the father isn't their real father. Mm-hmm. And you go, well, that doesn't, that sounds like way too high, but what do I know? It's something that happened. <laughs> it it's does something happen. that happened. It happened. It but happened. I don't, I don't know. If, but. if, uh, if you fa- raise somebody as your own. Mm-hmm. And then you find out when they're 15, 16 that they're that not, they're, they're they're not de- genetically yours. Does that matter? Yes, it does. Not to me. No, I mean, it's dynamic. Like, it does. Like, it's a shock. Like, you, everyone needs oh, sure. to shock, navigate that and depending sh- on uh, what was there. But you still you know? raise that person. Yeah, but we never know in that case, right? Because... Um, you know, uh, maybe that person had suspicion before, you know, since the kid, you know, was born and uh, was like, mm, those eyes. <laughs> and then, you, you know, shitty. you talk about you that. No, you, you talk about, like, you on. talk about your, the man and she's like, no, 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 <laughs> the uncle. And, you know, everybody like it used to be a joke, right? That like somebody would be like the milkman's son instead of like. Uh, yeah, exactly. The male post. Yeah, guy, yeah, like, that's right. The mailman. Mailman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's all. No, it happened. It happened. It happened. Sure, it happened, but I, I don't see how it matters. I mean, I don't think that we were meant to be monogamous. Generally not. I don't think. Generally not. So we're trying. And... I, I think some people are built that way, and some people aren't. Yeah. It's just uh, a constraint. Like, it's, you need to force yourself. Yeah, well, no. I think so. <laughs> no? I don't, I don't know. Some people, it's, some people are not meant for that. Some mm-hmm. people, they, they, are, they thrive much better in polyamorous or open relationships or multi-partner yeah. relationships. Yeah. I was never like that. I was always... But you same. haven't tried it. No, right? but I'm, I'm not 
interested in having another partner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, when I've been with somebody, that's been my partner. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, like, I'm more of a serial monogamist, I guess they say, but but mm-hmm. not in the sense where I, like, would go through them or I wouldn't cycle through partners. Like, I think I've had three partners in the last 30 years, right? <laughs> I think I, um, I, I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'll, for me, it's like wine. You yeah. Know? Um, it's, I love relationship when they're long, longer enough. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like wine ages well, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so a good relationship gets better as time goes on. Yeah, that's what I consider. <laughs> that's fair. what I prefer. That's fair. Yeah. So, um, that was our. We did only one comment, but we kind of went on a tangent. And, and... We do. <laughs> We we'll do the others another time, okay? Keep or we coming. Won't and, and or keep we commenting, won't. and we'll get to something. Else. Yes, uh, thank you very much. If you've been um, watching until here, thank you for being with us. This is how we are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We decided to put it out to uh, share with you. So um, feel free to uh, make the discussion grow and let us know what you think yeah. about it. Was All right. my was my pleasure to talk to you. So, again, I guess, uh, where can people find us? You can uh, find me on uh, Instagram, uh, Pamela Kazikare, and uh, on Twitter, Ikigata Nyakazi. <laughs> <laughs> I put the link in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But also, we have a feminist family Instagram now. Yeah, we have a feminist family Instagram. I'm still working on that. Okay. So, go and subscribe there as well but and if uh if you're seeing this on youtube go and subscribe on spotify Mm -hmm. and if you're listening or watching on spotify go and do it on youtube (laughs) and if you liked what we were talking about um you can also share with your friends and um, discuss about it Uh, we don't have the truth we are sharing I'm pretty confident. Our truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I, uh, I, I'm, I consider myself as a growing. Well, for sure. All the right? time. Sure. So um, everything I say is what I feel now. That's what I think. Sure. So maybe you're going to be able to make myself change my, <laughs> um, my stand on uh, mm-hmm. some topics. So thank you very much for being with us. And I also have a, a website, uh, skepticalleftist.com, and I'm skeptical lefty or skeptical leftist on all, every single social media site that exists. <laughs> See you another time. <laughs>